everybody. Welcome to Mary Giuliani Live. I am so happy you're here with us tonight. We have intuitive Mark Mezadorian, excuse me, Mark, for that. Uh, and he is, uh, I'm so excited to talk to him because he's all about helping us find our divine partners. So if you're single and you're looking for uh, a really healthy and connected relationship, Mark is going to be so great for you to listen to. So I'm going to bring him on in just a few minutes. Uh, he's in our virtual green room. But before we start, I always like to mention that uh, the whole purpose of the show is to really support you in being true to yourself, going for your dreams, risking, stepping out of your comfort zone. And, you know, when you put yourself in environments like this show and, and you get to watch other people doing it, it really does make a huge difference because environments are really, really key in helping you take risks and move forward and feel supported in your life. Now, for those of you watching live, you can actually ask Mark or me questions in real time. And all you have to do is go to the, uh, the little chat box, which is right below the live stream box. So uh, please just feel free to type in your questions throughout the whole show. Uh, it's really a great way to get insight and ideas from Mark, who's an expert at helping us find our divine partners. So. Um, if you are also, uh, you know, somebody that wants to be supported and empowered every single week, make sure you get on my email list because every single week you just get one email from me and we go over uh, in the email who my guest is that's coming up so you can make sure you can watch live and watch, you know, ask questions in real time. You'll also get links from the previous show so that you can either watch a, a replay or listen to it while you're in your car or while you're working out. So make sure you get on my email list. All you, all you have to do is go up to Mary Giuliani Live and there's a newsletter tab that you just need to click on and enter your email address. Also, we also have the show on iTunes, so just look up my show, Mary Giuliani Live, on iTunes and sign up there and you'll get the show downloaded automatically every single week. So um, with that, I just want to acknowledge that Mark is, uh, like I said, he's an intuitive, a teacher, and a writer. And he's created a couple of online courses. One is Attract Your Divine Partner, and the other one is Angelic Infusions, Live the Truth of Who You Are. I love both those titles, by the way. Um, he, off he offers private uh, intuitive readings, workshops, and weekly intuition classes. So without further ado, let's bring on Mark Mizadorian. Hi. Hi. Mark. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me, Mary. You are so welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Um, Thank you. You know, there's a few people here that you might, well, there's actually somebody in the chat room that you know, Susan Lander's here. Hi, Susan Lander. <laughs> yeah. So we got Susan in the chat room, and I'm sure we'll have more soon, too. Um, Wonderful. So, Mark, uh, I, I like to start just kind of getting a little feel for your background and maybe how you mm -hmm. got involved in this work. Um, mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to, to become an intuitive and, and do these types of workshops and, and classes and things? Well, uh, most of us get into spirituality through suffering or insight, and mine was the um, the first, which is suffering. In 1998, yeah. I, in 97, all these different things happened. My grandmother died. I had a relationship, and, and I started working a mm -hmm. full-time job at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, working six days a week, 12 hours a day, so I did not process anything. Oh and then God. I, at the end of the year, I went to, on a trip to Europe, and I started having all these metaphysical experiences that were mm -hmm. foreign to me. And I came back from that trip, and I left my apartment in the care of a couple who I knew. And unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to me they, they broke up when I was gone. And the woman went on a drug binge in my apartment. So I came back oh my to my God. apartment being trashed. And oh uh, so, um, so I threw her out. And, but there was this <laughs> negative energy in the apartment. And I didn't know what to do with it. And a friend of a friend told me what to do, and that involved calling an Archangel Michael. So after a few days of mm -hmm. getting my mojo up I went in and said get that bleep out of here and was reclaiming my apartment and right. calling an Archangel Michael and um, out of the my apartment had a long hallway and I was mm -hmm. in one room and I saw at the corner of my eye this kind of black bear thing in the other room and mm -hmm. I threw this glass bowl down the hallway and it landed perfectly in the center of the room did not break the toilet flushed and it was gone so oh my God. that got my attention this dramatic thing got my attention of like, well, calling it an angel kind of works. And yeah. um, so in the anxiety attack, what it did was it led me to the belief or understanding that what I was doing wasn't working. 
So mm -hmm. what else was there? So I started to do a form of therapy called EMDR, and uh -huh. that therapist helped introduce me to different spiritual principles. And my sister, about a year later, started working with Doreen Virtue, mm -hmm. uh, an angel expert who's wonderful. And so I started to really work with angels, and that became very right. fruitful and discovered I could ask a question and get an answer. And, mm -hmm. um, and that this support was here for me. And so the world just got right. bigger and bigger and bigger. And from that, my interest was, well, how does this actually work? What, what actually happens in communicating with angels? What is actually there? And so from a practical and pragmatic point of view, I started to just work with them and just in this sense of discovery. And what I discovered uh -huh. was the consistencies that were there, which is mainly around support. And the fact that we're all powerfully intuitive, it's very simply a muscle to strengthen over time and to let also our sense of trust and faith straight, uh, strengthen. So that's, that was the beginning point for me. Wow, wow. I mean, it's, it's so amazing how just, you know, a lot of people think when something really negative happens, like, oh, poor me, yeah. or, you know, or just, just feeling like uh, it's just a tragedy, and yet you were able to really take it and, and really make a whole new life for yourself out of it. So, right. um, yeah. you know. Well, there's, so, there's a point to that, ahead. I think, that, that's helpful real quick, uh, which is Michael Beckwith has a great question, which is, well, what's being asked of you? So when yes. things are hard for us, I think that is the question, like, what is being asked of me right now? So if things right. are going away or the cast of characters is changing, what's being asked of me? And so we release victimization and recognize, well, something, so with, you know, doors closing, there's doors opening. And the central right. question of what do we want to have happen? And, right. you know, Absolutely. something we'll talk about in this course, the partnership course, like what do you want to have happen? We're so accustomed, especially in America, to focus on what we don't want or focus right. on the negative. But it's a space right. of like, well, what, what do you want, you know? Oh, yeah. that's so perfect. I mean, there is a negativity bias, I think, just from a human standpoint, but I, from a metaphysical or transformation standpoint, we can, tran we can transcend that if, if we really focus on that. Yeah. And that's what I love about mm -hmm. your philosophy. You know, as mm -hmm. far as intuition goes, um, you know, there's a huge long history of intuition and people having different opinions about it. Um, how would you... Uh, respond to like you know the whole issue of intuition is it is this for everybody or is this just for certain people you know in terms of finding your divine partner uh, it tr intuition truly is we all have the ability to tune in and it's just mm -hmm. putting into context so we don't have a cultural conversation around intuition in fact we are accustomed to not talking about that or to ha, 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 laugh it off uh whatever right. to dismiss it so let's say you and I are talking about intuition. A third person we don't know walks up. We'll probably change the subject, you know. So that's a. Um, I think I think what's interesting with intuition is to look at the harm that has created our current dynamics around it. So the question right. is, how has intuition gone in human history? You know, people were Jesus, Joan of Arc. They were killed, uh, burned, oh, yeah. whatever it was. And so there's if we think of what's in our DNA, there's information going like, yes. shut up, don't do that. And that's smart, but it's a space to recognize that we, it's, so if we look at what's actually happening now, intuitives right. aren't being killed, healers aren't being right. killed, so it's right. safe. So it's recognizing, let's acknowledge the alarm and turn it off and then see what is here with the system of support. So the whole point right. of spirituality is to make the world bigger. Intuition makes your world bigger. Absolutely. And with, and, yeah, and oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, say, and so, uh, yeah, you go. There's a little delay, so t so sometimes it kind of throws things off. Um, sure. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so anyway, I was just going to say, uh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I just got a I just got a message that from Jane that she can't see the live stream. So I'm just concerned about that. Um, sure. You know, you want to we do have look a, at that and I'll talk. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and you talk. Look. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go talk ahead. and, and you deal with that. Um, so if we think about then working with angels, angels work with unconditional love and we are very accustomed as humans to focusing on conditional love, even when we think it's unconditional love. So human unconditional love might look at like look like you are loved you are loved you are loved you are not loved so our love stops where we lose familiarity 
So when we get into a different culture, different language, um, different faith and such that we get afraid and we stop loving. Angels don't do that. They love everyone and they love us exactly as we are right now. And so right. no matter what has happened, we are loved. No matter what hasn't happened, we are loved. So that's this big difference to think about in terms of guidance, especially working with angels and guides, is that there's, there's not this um, space of lack. There's a space of abundance and abundance of that. guidance. And, th and thinking about their job, their job is to help us out. So we are yes. here to express ourselves. We're here to, um, to accomplish things and to share our gifts and all of that all those are expansive dynamics and angels are here to help us be expansive and big and most Absolutely. of our human dynamics constrict or contort who we are right well yeah. i agree and the good news is that we are online um i checked right and we are and now jane can see us too so maybe there's jane's in hawaii good. so i don't know maybe there's <laughs> Hi, jane. a fiber optic <laughs> distance or something anyway um I just wanted to say one thing before we move on to your program. Um, sure. Just being in the metaphysical world for 25 years or whatever, I've seen that a lot of people feel like almost like they're coming out of a spiritual closet by just sharing that they believe in intuition and angels and guides and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to people that may be watching that may feel uncomfortable sharing this with other people is only share it with people that feel safe to you. You know, I mean, yes. that's. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any feedback on that? Well, I have a whole article um, called coming, uh, Eight Steps in Coming Out of the Spiritual Closet, and my conclusion is to <laughs> essentially not until you're ready to, but to recognize right. all the different facets of that, which is the, it, it is to keep that small and build muscle with it and to be around a supportive yes. community. So, um, right. and why is I made every mistake, like I list eight things, I made every mistake you could make of like, hey guys, you got to do this. And people right. are like, that's crap. And like, so yeah. it's like, yeah. no, it's like keep, keep it small and to build yes. your muscle and to walk your talk and to recognize who actually there is to hang out with. And when, what is those convers yes. what are those conversations like? But mainly it's a space of um, your vibration is the thing that's going to change. And the, yes. the space that is golden, people ask you, like, you seem really happy. What are you doing? You go, well, I'm doing this, you know. Exactly. And so there's an opportunity in that rather than, so no one likes to be told what to do. And no one likes advice. Absolutely. And uh, exactly. this don't work. So it's a space of just recognizing, you know, how this actually works and to um, let, um, you know, let wisdom be part of your journey. Absolutely. You know, people, totally people have done this that. before you and to follow the guidance that's there for you right you know so it's not unknown exactly so yeah. um you know the the thing that you mentioned also in your in your program is that a lot of the issues we have in our western culture around romance is that we try to figure things out or we want to control everything so could yeah. you address that sort of approach that sure. we take and why it doesn't work Sure. There, there's three uh, very American or very Western culture dynamics, which is our, our wanting to control every single thing, our wanting to figure everything out before we move forward, and also the idea that something else should be happening rather than what is happening, the sense of not being present. And so yes. all those things take us completely out of the present moment, and we have no power in that, even in trying to control everything. So where we... Um, so we're getting to the question of like how change actually happens and acknowledgement is a huge part of that to acknowledge what is actually happening, how you feel right. and what you would like to have happen. How, how what, 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 what direction do you want the car to point in? Right. And exactly. a larger part of that truly is um, to recognize that our default setting is that there's an idea that someone else is in charge. And when we recognize that we are in charge and we have help, mm -hmm. That is a space mm -hmm. where something can happen. Beautiful. Well, let's let's go into uh, the first part of your program, which I love. Sure. It's, it's about individualizing your energy. And by the way, this yeah. is a seven a seven part program. So we're going to go mm -hmm. over each step tonight. So talk about about clearing the energies and stuff like that. And by the way, when I was listening to this before, you know, I've mm -hmm. been listening to your program before the show, and I was mm -hmm. just struck by within like 10 minutes, I would say, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. It's like clearing these energies of, of other people and that it's energies that's not even mine. And, and it really helped me see how um, 
that a lot of times, and even me, I'm on this big spiritual path and I'm very aware and I still hadn't realized that, you know what, I, I think I'm still holding some energy of other people that's not serving me. So could you share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I refer jokingly to the course as spiritual bleach. And because we're going to go through every single layer possible, this 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 course has been is the thing I've worked on for the longest in in the spiritual work I've done, and um, yeah. based on my own experience and my own uh, having things work well and having things not work, and um, so individualizing your energy truly is just that at face value of letting your thoughts be your own, your body be your own, your emotions be your own, your energy be your own. And mm -hmm. so what we do is work with Archangel Michael, who's the angel, kind of the bouncer angel, angel of protection and clearing, and let mm -hmm. him do all the work. So we call him in, and you get to use your free will. I invite you and have space mm -hmm. in the course for you to say, thank you, Archangel Michael, for being with me. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for clearing my energy, and to let him do that. And mm -hmm. what happens is um, we just enter a space where um, our body recognizes what is happening. Our body knows how to clear energy. So it's, it mm -hmm. is just that the individual individualization of your energy allows you to be you. And as that, it's recognizing which you it is, which is your powerful adult self, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But just right. that of like having a space where, um, okay, you've got a lot of room around you and that room gives you possibility, like something different can happen in that space. So, and so like, like specifically um, in this, one module that you have about clearing mm -hmm. or individualizing your energy it talks about removing and releasing any limiting thoughts or beliefs that might have been imposed upon you or that you've mm -hmm. adopted as mm -hmm. your own that really aren't really you so could you give us some examples of that uh just that uh, belief system i think we all have these moments as we age right. and mature recognizing like that's not my thought that's my parents thought which is okay. completely natural or like uh you know part of this course speaking truthfully is mm -hmm. I had a mar I manifested a marriage through through mm -hmm. these techniques and the marriage did not work which, right. com which completely surprised me and then the the marriage not working what was in neon to me was we got a lot lo love wasn't enough and that we did not share mm -hmm. beliefs right. and that was just this this like well no one freaking talks about that you know and um so it's, a, it's yeah. all about compromise like no it's not it's about do you share beliefs do you solve problems in the same way are you on the same right. page so right. it's um recognizing then when we clear energy w so when i was married i had all these beliefs pop up that just were not mine they were not my right. nature were not my personality the main one w was you need to be home you're married you need to be home it's like well okay. i Assumptions. like to be social and it's like yeah. it's, well, it's just yeah. like well where's where's this where's this a belief coming from Right, you know, and all, right. and for both of us, recognizing for her also of like, well, these, all these things are popping up, and right. um, to be able to clear those. So learning how right. to clear beliefs, to recognize what's happening, and let something else happen. So you, uh, the you, the true you, the powerful you, is present in that right. partnership along with your partner. I love that. Um, the other thing you have in part one is that, and I love this because it's so self-loving and kind and self-compassionate, is no matter what has happened in the past, wh whatever, and no matter whatever you've done that you, f mm -hmm. that you feel maybe you don't deserve love, uh, that you're going to be able to let that go and really focus on unconditional love, which is that you're loved completely right now. So could you share a little bit about yeah. that? Well, our um, idea around a angels and guides and God and any kind of spiritual work tends to go through the lens of deserving and worth. And that is yeah. not so. So um, I often hear people say like, well, Archangel Michael doesn't like me because I did this. Like, well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Just simply not true that he loves you no matter what. So it's right. truly getting to the space of understanding unconditional love and, and kind of a buzz phrase I use, let's put the un- back in unconditional love and notice what Absolutely. that's like so if we truly um so if we drop we discount ourselves based on experience we're releasing a possibility for wisdom you know well and yeah, um completely yeah, yeah. well and it's a matter of like the, these things these things help when things when things don't work it helps you know we, we then know when my marriage ended i knew more than ever what i wanted and what i didn't want and Absolutely. that's great information. Yeah. Well, it's like very law of attraction. Abraham, like, you know, mm -hmm. 
what, what, when you find out what you don't want, it gives you clarity on what you do want. So, um, mm -hmm. so part two is on forgiveness, and I love this part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. could you share a little bit about forgive everyone, including yourself? And yeah. Yeah. Well, in this part, we forgive everyone for real. Like we actually forgive uh, people. And what I discovered in doing this work for a while is where were the, the where were the stopping places with forgiveness? And the angels right. just came through um, with this idea of forgiving in percentages. So yeah. we could all forgive one percent. Hundred percent works. You know, eighty-two percent works. 34% right. works. It doesn't matter, but just to let there be some movement with that. And so right. if we are releasing uh, the stopping place and just letting even people who did us major harm, 1%, that just moves moves things. It came also from, um, you know, Danny and Brinkley, the guy who's died multiple times. He's died three times. And he oh, said, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. He, um, I'm familiar with him through Agape, the spiritual center in Los Angeles. He has yes, books. Yes, I'm familiar with and Agape, he's spending, yeah. Yeah, he's spending his time now um, helping people transition. So he was struck by lightning twice and died a third time in a different way. But when oh he God. died, he um, felt like tar on him, all the unforgiveness. So he made it his work oh. to oh. forgive, forgive, forgive. So in the multiple times he's died, he said, oh, I got, that got better. <laughs> so it's yeah. recognizing that um, unforgiveness you know, um, slows us down. And my grandmother, who was very dear to me, she died. And um, a bit after she died in 97, um, you know, she showed an image of her and her husband, who I never met because he died in 1953, holding hands. Right. And she hated him, absolutely hated him. She would say, like, uh -huh. you know, um, like, I'm glad he died. God, take him away. You oh, know, my God. Um, so she, she and so showing that you know when people die they enter a space of unconditional love and just showing that the two of them together in harmony yeah. was very informative to me so um just that it's very simply letting forgiveness happen for real and in that seeing that as an empowering act so we do something very specific we um work with archangel michael of going mm -hmm. into the room of your psyche which is a jungian uh, principle and we nice. let Michael bring forward every single person you know in groups and you right. forgive them but you do so for the most part you do so with honor I honor you I forgive mm. you for everything right now I ask for your forgiveness I invite you to leave this space so eventually it's just you and Michael in that room with people who've done you harm there's not the honor it's basically get the hell out of here it's more like I forgive you get out <laughs> so it, it, it varies, well, being, being uh, specific, that's what people might have done you, um, sexual abuse, romantic abuse, whatever yeah. it was, people have harmed yeah. you or violence. You so no longer get, get to, to occupy any space in my field, yeah. You got Beautiful. it. Beautiful. You got it, yeah. So that's the majority of that part. We do, um, there's a preview or a, um, almost like a prologue to the forgiveness, which is to work with Archangel Michael on releasing limiting vows from this lifetime, past lives, and ancestry. So that's, that's oh, that clearing was, vows yeah. of poverty, celibacy, virginity, um, silence, slavery, servitude, all the S's, yeah. all the P's, you know, and just to clear the deck on that and to clear the limiting ones and to essentially take new vows through I am statements, I am peaceful, I am abundant, I am right on time. Beautiful. You know, I'm creative. So that energy, those two things work together. Right. Well, and you know what's interesting about your work is that I consciously am aware of, you know, yeah, forgiving other people is, is going to be really help, helpful to clear my energy. But having a mm -hmm. course like this where it actually facilitates the process is really helpful because a lot of times you just won't even do it. And I, I, what I yeah. love about your course is that it really Thanks. covers everybody and you go through the groups of your family your co uh, former partners work co-workers ancestors and pets and yep. isn't, mm -hmm. yeah isn't that like isn't yeah. the field like eugenics or something where like the actual dna and energy from our ancestors is still can still be impacting us and just from a spiritual spec uh, perspective too from past lives so a lot of people are for sure you know go ahead clearing those things you know and so well this yeah yeah we're getting into the third part here if it's okay to go into it which is um so we talk in spiritual universe we talk about past lives yeah. but we think about what's in our dna it's information from this lifetime past lives and our ancestry 
So that's right. everyone on your mom's side and dad's side going back to the first man and woman. It's a lot of information. So the question I ask people is, and like I ask you, Mary, well, how far back do you know your ancestry? Oh, well, like I, maybe like three generations, hardly any. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. I, so not, maybe you know, definitely not to the first right. man and woman right. on the planet. <laughs> right, exactly. So maybe, you know, one, maybe 1% 1 of your ancestry. So who the bleep are all these other people? And their right. experiences are in your DNA. So we've already yes. talked about how is human history gone for intuitives and healers? How's it gone for women? Yeah. You know, oh, it's God, in the last yes. five minutes. It's in the last five minutes that women are picking their partners, isn't it? So oh, well, it's all this info. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. I actually just, I was just visiting a friend of mine recently and they're still in this family arranged. I mean, it's not like required, but it was like, well, I, I, you know, I told my daughter she should marry this person. And so, yeah, it's still happening to some still degree. still happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what we do is to not see anything as wrong or bad, but our idea around ancestry is the idea that they'd be horrified by our lives. And the opposite is true. They're thrilled. So if we think of, um, okay. this is, I learned this through, through mediumship of, you know, they want us mm -hmm. just, they're, they're cheering us on. So there is no right. people going like, well, what the heck? Like, she's not wearing a skirt, you know, it's not so much that. So we think of the principle is we are honoring our ancestor, uh, ancestors by thriving. And yes. why that is, is the purpose of having descendants is the hope that they will do better. And Absolutely. we are the descendants who are doing better. And that's a space of grace. And that's interesting. You know? Oh my God. So it's we can clear, fabulous. clear those, those outdated ideas um, from the ancestry, but also past lives. Past lives reveal themes and patterns. And so mm -hmm. when we identify, let's, let's say things aren't flowing for us currently. Um, mm -hmm. in a romantic life. By, a, by going into three different past lives, which this guy's you through, um, you're going to see like, okay, this is not just from now. This, this pattern has existed before. And that leads us to right. a space where we can clear it very easily. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, this, this is not, com not completely on topic, but just from my own history of like my mother's mm -hmm. side of the family, there's, there's a very devout Catholic family and there was a lot of shame and guilt and it got transferred all the way down. I mean, I could yeah. see it in my grandmother, my mother, me, and mm -hmm. I'm like, thank God, yeah. stopping that, that process. But I mean, just Christianity in general, mm -hmm. I mean, has been promoting, mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, suffering and, yeah. um, and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Right. I think the main point here is the fact that we can change, we, we could identify the pattern and stop it. And it's okay for us yes. to change and to be happy. Yeah. And the beauty of your program is that you facilitate that process. So, you know, like I said, it's one thing just to think about it, but it's another thing to actually have a program to actually facilitate it. So I, I really love that you're doing this. Thank you so much. You who is listening to this or watching this right now is your adult self. And how we know that is adults gather information. So it's the adolescent and the child who would want no, no, no new information, just want to kind of go about their day with the status quo. Um, so with identifying your powerful adult self, what happens is a space of recognizing that you are in charge and you have help. What we do in this part is to work with Archangel Michael and the goddess Kali from the Hindu faith. Kali tends to have a reputation of being kind of like ah, wild, but this nurturing aspect of Kali comes forward to work on transforming not only your adult, but your child self and your adolescent self. So we work with the child self and strip them of any adult responsibility by getting to an agreement with your adult self that the adult's going to handle adult romance, adult sexuality, adult finances, adult housing, adult work, and the child is free to play. And that difference, that reassignment of roles and giving the child permission to play uh, moves an enormous amount of energy. So we do something similar with the adolescent. We work with the adolescent to acknowledge what their thoughts and feelings and beliefs are around romance. And then we get into a space of giving them a new role, which is to not handle adult romance, but to go off and express themselves as adolescents. So they go to a field with masters of expression like 
taking guitar lesson with Jimi Hendrix or John Lennon, to dance with Isadora Duncan or Fred Astaire or Michael Jackson, to sing, to act, to write, to play, to paint, whatever it is. But they're going to go express themselves, and that leaves you, the adult, to handle adult things and adult romance and adult sexuality. We then work with Kali and Archangel Michael. I hear you, Mary. Can you hear me now? And I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, we work then to clear away any um, damage that has been done to the to your romantic self and your sexual self and get into a space that your adult self is prepared to handle your romantic life. Okay. So that's part four, Mary. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, could you could you share a little bit more about just well, I mean, like, I think you mentioned something in your program about how, like, certain uh, celebrity relationships are more adult-style relationships. I thought that was really interesting. Well, the, the main point came from where in our culture is, is adult romance modeled for us, and it's really not. So if you look at, you know, um, Sting and his wife, the Obamas, um, Bruce Springsteen and his wife, and uh, Oprah and her partner, and that's about it. You know, if you could think of more, let me know. <laughs> but there's, there's so few. But what we're used to is like the Brad and Angelina, like, oh, my God, this is so dramatic. So this is all adolescence. So adolescent romance is a thing that we're used to as our model in our culture. Right. Well, it, it, it was so interesting, yeah, when you did mention those particular couples because it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, they, they do have uh, obviously a, a really cool connection and and you know what Oprah's respect the, yeah respect mutual respect and, and they've been together for like 30 years or more so absolutely mm -hmm. so let's talk about yeah. balance balancing the masculine and the feminine right so i start this always with the question what is the divine masculine yes. and then i wait for the silence pause 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 and so we don't know that is a monumentally huge problem um, so if we think of the divine feminine as um, n energy that is nurturing and creative and inclusive, we could identify the divine masculine as energy that is confident and confident in a way that it is, inc it is encouraging different things to happen and inclusive. So this is the new power of power with as opposed to power over. Right. We're currently witnessing the last dance of the old dynamic of power over. Right. So I think Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, perfectly embodies the new masculine energy. Well, he is just, he is loving, he is relaxed, he is present. Well, it's so cool to see that too because, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the past, I don't know, several thousand years, I, I know that there was a time when women were more you know, revered as, as far as like mm -hmm. leaders and that sort of thing. But, uh, I mean, we've made progress, but, but yeah, there's just, uh, it, it, but men, having men em embrace both aspects. Um, can you think of another uh, leader that embraces the divine masculine? I thought oh, oh, uh, President Obama did that incredibly well because he was gracious, unafraid, and inquisitive. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, he wasn't react. So basically, he could he was criticized constantly. He wasn't going, oh my God, you know, unlike some people. He 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 was like, okay, that's fine, but here's here's my thought. You know, he could have a conversation like an adult. Absolutely, that's interesting. Yeah, but I, where I think this gets into a space of harm, uh, Mary, is where men don't necessarily know where to be. Because the old dynamic of the old, you know, I call it the John Wayne energy of like, don't worry, sweetheart, I'll take care of it. Don't think about a thing. That doesn't work. Neither does the reaction to that, which is the emasculated male, which is like, oh, honey, you want to watch, you know, this, that show again? Great. That sounds wonderful. The man has no will. Yeah. And so it's like the space of what's here now, which is what's it like to be um, a powerful man who is inclusive right. and conscious? Absolutely. You know, that's interesting. Course starts with five sections of clearing, and this is the last one before getting into two on manifesting. Um, and it's very simply carte blanche for giving all women for everything and all men for everything. Wow. And what that does is just it lets resentment move. Mm -hmm. It lets like the profiling we do, which is generalizations can be accurate of like, well, women always do this, men always do this. It moves energy around that. Mm -hmm. And as by acknowledging that, that we might be, you know, if we tapped into it, 
we we could all find anger at men and anger at women. Oh yeah. And to acknowledge it and to forgive it just moves a ton of energy and makes room for something different to happen. So in the acknowledgement and forgiveness, mm -hmm. there's space for something new to happen. What about acknowledge? What about uh, women embracing their masculine and, and blending their masculine energy? This really is about using um, all of ourselves, which is the the core of what's being asked of us during this time: is to not to segment ourselves, but to use the whole of our consciousness, the whole of our our mind, body, spirit, and emotion, mm -hmm. and to also use our wisdom, our um, and to have hope. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we are confident spiritually, we're going to include people, include aspects of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're not going to. So if we think of the confinement we have based on gender, this is part of, I think, the gender, part of the gender fluidity right now really is response to the uh, misunderstanding and misuse of both divine feminine and divine masculine. Oh, really? So people don't necessarily know where to land. Um, there's that also the best theory I've heard is Shirley MacLaine talking about she did some work on Atlantis and really tuned into that space and discovered that people there weren't so gender oriented. So because we're in an, in an Atlantean age, her theory was this is being echoed right now with the gender fluidity. Interesting. Which is great as people, you know, embodying who they are, but it's just curious that it's just so prevalent right now. Yeah. And if we look of, I see, um, you know, harm the harm of especially masculine energy being misused for a long time um coming you know the fruition of that is what's happening now a bit so there's something different for us so so coming once again coming back to just the question like what's divine masculine energy and the fact that we can't answer that mike once again archangel michael's answer is it's energy that is confident so it's inclusive and encouraging oh interesting and um the fact that we don't we don't have that conversation, you know, no one's thinking about you know everyone's so fed up with men being in charge, right. which is fine to be fed up with it. But what are men supposed to do? Men aren't going to vanish off the planet. That you've never met a man if you think that right. basically, right? So it's a matter. Of, well, what are we supposed to do? Yeah, you know. And so it it is um, acknowledging here's a space. Let's really be solid with who we are. Let's be right. conscious beings, and let's include everyone. Let's hold space and create space and encourage people. But recognizing that men are included in that right. and can be nurtured and helped and healed by uh, d the divine feminine. So when you Does uh, that make sense? Yeah, yeah it, it totally does. When you do your mm -hmm. uh, course, uh, are, do you bring in like uh, Michael and other uh, angels or yeah. guides for, for that process? Archangel Michael's in every single part. Uh, he's your guide and your friend. Mm -hmm. um, we also work, he's, um, he's consistent throughout Archangel Ariel, Kali, who I mentioned in the part we just mentioned, we work with the goddess Bridget, who's uh -huh. essentially a female version of Archangel Michael, or Michael's a, f a male version of her. Uh -huh. um, and so, and then moving forward, yeah, we work with um, mainly Michael, but there's lots of different female guys that come forward. Great. So there's well, balance. Let's talk about uh, the Angelic speed dating. I, I love I love yes. the title of this piece. Could you share mm -hmm. a little bit about that? This is designed to blow up the idea of type. Okay. So we all might have a type. You know, I like tall redheads. Just profiling. Tall redheads okay. get my attention. Okay. So what? So so what we do here is to um, we work with Archangel Michael and meet. So by this time in the course, you're all warmed up spiritually. We let Archangel Michael introduce you to the souls of five different potential partners. Ah. These are people who are on the planet, who are alive, and geographically friendly to you. They're not in Greenland, which is mean unless you live in Greenland. Right. So it's not a, it's about inclusion. So, so let's say the tall redhead is number one. Who are the other four? Uh -huh. So it's designed to have an experience where you notice the energy of that soul, they may, it, not having putting a face to them, but to feel into that energy, to see what that soul says to you, what you feel inclined to say to that soul, and then you write down what you liked about that encounter. So you do that five different times and you build a list of what you value in partnership and what you want. That list is a map and to so, the partnership that you want. And so like, how do you determine, like, like what's the process when you do that? Like, 
how do you actually very simply it's it, what, what it sounds like is thank you Archangel Michael for bringing forward for Mary the soul of a potential partner for her then Michael so once again you're all warmed up intuitively by this time in the course right. um, so Michael would bring forward that soul your job is to tune into it and just notice what happens so we, we it, there's more of an introduction than that it's kind of a, a held space uh -huh. and then you notice that soul and that soul communicates to you and then you communicate to it I talk you through the whole thing and then you with grace and gratitude you let that soul go and then you write down your experience you write down what you liked and it is the the list is the outcome of that. So um, we are moving out of uh, we're moving into a space of practicality, and um, the fact that we do know what we want. We are just right. we are accustomed to in 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 to use very simple terms. We're accustomed to focusing on what we don't want. Right. So if, if someone goes on a bad date, the the story's probably gonna be like that asshole, da la la, you know, and you're gonna get stuck in the story right. instead of the space of like thank you. Now I know more than ever what I want and what I don't want. Let's focus on what I do want. I you know, that. so we're, 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 we're gathering information here, which is the adult role. So we meet okay. these five different souls and we go from there. Oh, that's so cool. And we and put that list to use like a map. It's a map of your part, the partnership that you want or the partnership that you're in and how to, how to make it more deep, how to deepen it. And so does it give you like, just as a felt sense of their energy so you'll know when you meet them that that's the person you will you will know you will know when you meet them oh how cool yeah, yeah. that that's happened to me with a with a gal in new york yeah so it's like oh i thank you i've met you so oh, it's like a so kind of a heads up cool. yeah. it's like aligning what yeah. i'm hearing is it's calling forth the energy and then so you already have a feel for who the person is so you'll recognize you got it them. yeah but I think also, perhaps even more importantly, is a space of it's opening up more possibility to you. It's engaging with the back of the the back of the head, that little knob in the back that acts like radar in your brain, of like so. Let's put on the table not only the tall redheads, but like these other these other aspects of women, to just notice them. Right. Um, I do have a, a question here from Jane. Um, what did you learn from your process of your relationship when you were married? I learned, um, I, I learned, and this fact always sounds mean, but I learned that only only people who are married understand marriage. Yeah, to actually legally be married, to have that, to have the ceremony, all that. Uh, what I mean is, so I mentioned before, all these when I was married, all these beliefs came up, and okay. were like right in my face, and it's like, well, what the hell, you know, where does this yeah. come from? To recognize uh, how much care. A marriage takes that you must protect your marriage uh -huh. and also how do you resolve problems and once again the beliefs so yes. what do you do when you have different beliefs how do you negotiate that Absolutely. you know and to recognize that love isn't enough you have to have a foundation if you both have a spiritual way to deal with things that can really help but very simply like the amount of effort it takes to um, to be married and to recognize perhaps even before you're married like do you actually share beliefs how you're gonna solve problems mm -hmm. you know and and just engaging in a very deep conversation about compatibility Fun, but <laughs> well, how, yeah. I mean marriage just the whole essence of marriage has been around for thousands of years and so there are all these cultural beliefs that we might not even realize that hold you know yeah, uh, and for me and and for my wife, they all came crashing up. You yeah. know, they're just like, yeah. like in my yeah. like maybe in her mind, it's like, well, in my mind, marriage means this, and you're like, not for yep. me. <laughs> yeah, you, that was exactly what happened. Yeah, so that's exactly. really really good to know that you have. Yeah. So now you know you need to have that really kind of uh, honest, maybe <laughs> uncomfortable, but honest conversation in advance. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge yeah. a few people in the chat room. Um, there's sure. there's quite a few people here. Um, yeah. I want to acknowledge Rochelle. She's mentioning how she's really enjoying listening to you, and she loves how concise your explanations and deliveries, delivery oh, of the information is. That's wonderful. Is. And uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, and Susan and Jane, and there's a few other people um, that, mm -hmm. that are in here. So yay. Um, yay. So. 
after we do the angelic speed dating, mm -hmm. uh, then there's the visioning from your soul's perspective. So let's talk about that. Yes. So this is um, this is a component of visioning, and we all are familiar with visioning from law of attraction. But this is not so much visioning from your conscious mind. It's yes. engaging with the angels and all the guys that we've worked with so far in the course, and expanding things to your soul's perspective of ah. as a soul what you want to what what you're here to do, who you are as a soul, and letting Ooh. the soul identifying that as a space of perfection. Ooh. So. We tap into our souls as a space where there's perfect healing, perfect clarity, perfect guidance that we know why we're here right. and we're not and we're here to do this with other people. And that includes partnership. So it is very simply I, I talk you through a visualization. <coughs> excuse me. We get into the soul and then we visualize from that perspective what you would like to have happen. And then we give it to God and the angels. And then there's a space to receive guidance from Archangel Michael to get oh. into action, to give you action steps to move forward. So, so I also don't feel like meditation is a word. It's an experiential, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what I meant. It, it's an experiential um, event and that you're guided through to um, be very engaged and present in, in this work okay. and being very engaged with um, the partnership that you want and to create the space. So, this may sound like kind of a funny question, but do you recommend, mm -hmm. I don't even know if this is something you even can like deal with, but <laughs> online no. dating, like how to, <laughs> like putting yourself out there on online dating sites? What, um, what I've noticed, the consistency is it's very important for people to be very clear about what they want. So when we, when we open ourselves up to just anything, then anything happens. And usually that's um, less than energy or lower energy. But with a clear intention, intentionality of why you, why you are on an online forum, which is to make your world bigger, and then to let like-minded souls come forward, then that's right. fruitful. Well, I've been single for a couple of years now, and so I've been very mm -hmm. clear when I, I'm on a few of the, the online dating sites, and I'm very clear about mm -hmm. my spiritual path being a priority and that the people yeah. that I meet ha need to be just as passionate as I am about their personal growth mm -hmm. and spiritual growth too and so I think you're absolutely yeah. right you have to be very specific about what you put like putting your order into the cosmic kitchen you know what I mean? yes yeah so, yeah um, and and not following the waiter into the kitchen to make sure it's right to trust the yes. cosmic kitchen is going to deliver you what you like because you're available to it and also the space of one of the main things of so this is all about action so we build up to action, which is you being out in the world, doing things that you love to do. Right. And recognizing that by doing that, you'll be, you'll automatically meet people who are in vibrational harmony with you or have similar interests. And coming back to the map that we build in the fifth part, in the divine masculine, divine feminine part. So that, right. that, um, sorry, sorry, in the sixth part, in the angelic speed dating, which is, so the things on that list that are not currently in your life, there's an encouragement there to bring those things into your life now. And why is, so we have this romantic belief around people completing you. There's something different there, which is, so we're working with not only the law of attraction, but the law of recognition, which is wow. what you are looking for is looking for you. And by yeah. having work happen toward the things that are not in your life puts you in vibrational harmony with that. Oh, Does I that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so if I understand you correctly, you're saying that make sure that you create a full life as a single person and part of that will be what your divine partner will be attracted to as well that everything is in everything's about vibrational harmony so right. let's say there's there's elements of the things that you identify in the angelic speeding part that you would like right to include those aspects in your life right now let's say it's more play oh, yeah. or um courage whatever it is whatever it means to engage with those energies in your life that in itself is going to expand your world and put you into different situations where you'll meet different people. Absolutely. The I world will get bigger in that. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're just about at the top of the hour here, so... Um, okay. Mm -hmm. What is it, though, uh, that, that... I always like to ask my guests this. Um, what message mm -hmm. are you most passionate about that you want to share with the world around this topic? Uh, that you are loved exactly as you are right now. 
-hmm. and that we're not done. You're alive, so you're not done. So if we take time out of the equation and to recognize that you are right on time and that what you want matters. And very, very simply, let's not be the ones to say no and to let forward, let come forward an intention and let the angels and guides help you out. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Thank you so much, Mark. So how can people uh, do this course and work with you one-on-one -on -one or, or you know, how, how can people connect with you on this? Uh, it's on my. It's for sale on my website, which is markmezadorian.com. M-A-R-K-M-E-Z-A-D-O-U-R-I-A-N. Okay. If you go to the menu bar, um, and you'll see at the very end, the last bar is purchase. If yes. it, on a computer, it's purchase. Then you click purchase, and you'll see shop. If you okay. click shop, you'll see it come up. There's there's four different ways to get the course. There's a course by itself. Yes. Um, for sixty-eight dollars, there's also options for coaching. I like to offer to the folks listening now and to listen to this in the future um, right. if you get it through Mary and you just kind of send me a note like hey I heard this on Mary's show you could buy the course and I'll throw in um, as a gift a 15 minute reading with oh, you on nice. the phone so people can have that option also so get a sense of um, whether you want that at the beginning in the middle or at the end wherever you want that that there's a space to just talk about things get guidance for you specifically oh, awesome. around what's happening for you in the course so um, it's sixty-eight dollars by itself, and then there's different tiers for a half hour. So it'll be a, the fifteen minutes can be thrown on to the the half hour coaching, or okay. um, an hour session, or three hours of coaching. So whatever is going to serve you, but that's there for you. It's once again at markmezadorian.com and on um, my page um, on Facebook, uh, Mark Mezadorian, the Intuition Gym. There's a link there that you can click on um, to get to my site. Very good. Well, Mark, this has been such a pleasure. I'm so happy you've joined mm -hmm. us. This is so needed because so many of us that are single, even if we're spiritual, we don't have the opportunity to really line up our energy and get the support through, you know, non-physical beings, if you will, and, and mm -hmm. guides and guides and, yeah. and, and, and really have this place to focus with such a great course. So I really do recommend anyone that's single, get the support you need and, and take Mark's course. So with Thank you. that... I want to thank you mm -hmm. for coming. And You're very welcome. I just want to tag on this course is also for people who are married or in a relationship because it clears the beliefs. We could just make one simple oh. adjustment um, oh, in the manifesting cool. part of manifesting more um, community than a partner, and that's a oh. simple adjustment to make. But oh, the, the five clearing the five clearing parts, you could do that together as a couple. Boy, that's gonna move some energy <laughs> and, so and, uh, to have to have a conversation. Enhance, your improve, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can. Ben. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Wow, that was great. That was so great. All right. Um, I do have a couple of announcements, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, oh, by the way, Mar uh, Susan Lander does say, Mark helps me feel hopeful. You know what? That's how I feel, too. I feel hopeful with, with Mark's uh, program because you're not on your own. You have, you know, the support of the program and Archangel Michael and, you know, you, you don't have to do this alone. So, okay. Um, every week I do a coaching tip since I'm a coach and I like to line it up with the, um, the guests that I have. So today's coaching tip is really about looking at um, clearing away any kind of uh, just attachments that you have with anybody in, in, your, in your life. Um, so, like, I just want to encourage you to think of anybody, any past partners, any past, the, the, the messages that you've gotten from your parents or, you know, um, just different people that may come up for you that you know that there's some maybe energy that feels sort of stuck and, and not really complete, is to really ask for some spiritual guidance on how to clear that and um, even doing some journaling about it because... You know, so many people I talk to that are single, when I talk about, oh, are you on Match.com? And they're like, oh, I'm not very good at relationships. Or, uh, you know, there, there's just so many beliefs around relationships that are, that are really blocking people from even, you know, getting themselves in the flow. So I just want to support you guys in, in, in identifying people or beliefs that you feel that are blocking you from from really attracting the kind of relationship you want in your life or even enhancing the existing relationship that you have and really just making a conscious uh, effort to let those go and of course do Mark's course I mean 
by all means, that's the, the, the best solution you can do. But if you're not in a place to do that at this moment, at least you can do one piece of it. And this is just my, it's not Mark's process that I'm saying, but it's, it's kind of similar. Um, and then I always say, put it on your calendar, you know, make a commitment to take that step because if you don't make a commitment and write it down somewhere, it's not going to happen. And then you need to put a date by when you're going to do it. So I always say, do it by tomorrow and let me know how it goes. And um, by the way, I am a, just to, to announce some of my coaching programs, I am a life coach and I love working with women that are over 50 that are really longing to get their gift out into the world but feel like on their own they just haven't been able to get any traction. Um, so if you're feeling like, God, you know, I'm already in my 50s or 60s or 70s and I know I have this great message I want to share with the world but I'm not doing it and I don't want to die with my music still in me, I can help you. I've been there, I was there for many actual decades, and I'm living my purpose and my dream. I'm 100% authentic in my life, and so I would love to support you in really getting on track, being true to yourself, and really knowing that you're fulfilling the purpose that you're meant to fulfill in this life. So um, that's my coaching uh, program. If you are interested, you just go right up to my website and there's a coaching tab there and you can look for more information there. And then we have for next week um, a really interesting guest, Lori McCaskill, and she's actually a survivor, speaker, and motivator. And she's going to uh, discuss her 11-year journey as a survivor of pancreatic cancer. I mean, the, the, the survival rate for that particular kind of cancer is extremely low. And so she took that really devastating diagnosis and has been able to overcome it. And now she's on the road speaking and, and, and motivating people to overcome so many different challenges. So um, definitely join us next week for Lori McCaskill. And um, let's see, is there anything else? Well, there's just always one last thing is what is one thing you can do to be true to yourself? And put it on your calendar and do it tomorrow and you will be amazed at what happens. So thanks for being here and we'll see you next week.